Lord Dubs, tell us a little bit about your own journey of coming to the UK. I was six years old. My father, who was Jewish, had already left the day the Nazis came into Prague in March 1939. My mother was refused permission to leave and uh, she put me on a kinder transport. And I still remember the scenes at Prague Station, <coughs> German soldiers in the background with swastikas, anxious parents saying goodbye to their children, not knowing whether they'd see them again, and off the train went. Um, before that, we'd had the Germans everywhere in Prague. They'd, um, we'd had to tear a picture of the Czech president out of our school books and stick in a picture of Hitler, mm. things like that. And so the train left. Uh, we got to the Dutch border about 24 hours later. It was a, uh, hard wooden seats, but you know, the six-year-old, you don't, you don't notice that. And I was one of the youngest, if not the youngest, on the train. We got to the Dutch border. The older ones cheered because uh, they sensed they were out of reach of the Nazis. Um, they, um, for me, I knew it was significant, but I didn't understand why. Mm -hmm. And I was looking, looking out the window for windmills and uh, wooden shoes, which is what I knew of Holland. I couldn't see any, it was dark. We got on the boat, Harwich, and then, and then to Liverpool Street. Now, I was very lucky because my father had fled the Nazis the day, the day they arrived, and so he was there waiting for me at Liverpool Street. Mm -hmm. I should think quite a few of the children on the kinder transport didn't have a family member waiting for them. Some did, some didn't. Yes. There is a brass statue there now commemorating that moment. And, and I think as a nation, we're so proud of that. That, that was a good thing to do. It, it feels like we have a different climate today on receiving yeah. refugees. What, what do you think's changed? Well, uh, Britain, in 1939, Britain took 10,000 children on kinder transport, mainly from Germany, Austria and Czechoslovakia. And I came from Prague. Um, the, 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 um, most, if I, as I remember it, well, as, I, as I've learnt, I don't remember it, as I've learnt, most of the um, uh, European countries, if not all, said no. The Americans said these children would be additional to quota, so we took them. There were arguments against in the House of Commons, and Britain was not wonderful about adult people mm. seeking safety. There were problems. But the climate of opinion on the whole was, was reasonably favourable. And I think what changed was not in the immediate post-war period, but more recently. Mm. Uh, I think there's been a waves of migration, but there have also been asylum seekers. Asylum seekers are a small proportion of the total. Mm. So we need to get into perspective. They're the ones that attract all the attention because of boats and things. Uh, but um, asylum seekers, on the whole, are a small proportion of the total. And we have to remember, they're fleeing from war, threats of persecution, torture. I mean, there's a Syrian boy who said to me, He'd seen his father blown up in front of him by a bomb in Aleppo. How can one function in one's life one more has seen that? There were Afghan boys fleeing the Taliban uh, for, uh, in Afghanistan. Yeah. There, there were children fleeing from Eritrea or Ethiopia or in the Horn of Africa, uh, worried about uh, being conscripted all their lives into armies. Very difficult, mm. very difficult circumstances. And I think the more we understand what people are fleeing from, mm. the more I think we feel a responsibility to provide some of them safety. Most of them don't come here. Yes. You know, it, it, it's a small proportion only. Uh, in, in fairness, I'll say this, it's good we've taken people from Hong Kong, it's good we've taken people from Ukraine. Mm. But for the rest, there seems to be more of a hostility. Mm. And I, I think one thing that's changed is that leading politicians, some of them, are using hostile expressions. Yes. To call people fleeing for safety from these terrible experiences, to call them invaders, I think is quite offensive. Mm. Mm. And the danger is it makes local communities less receptive, or less willing to be receptive, uh, whereas what we need is local communities to be supportive, mm. welcoming and encouraging. That's right. Our hope with our festival here today uh, is by listening to people's stories, we might help build empathy, that we begin to not see a newcomer as a threat or a, a flood or an invasion, but as another person that we could relate to. What else do you think we could be doing as a society to break down those barriers? Well, first of all, today is a good day. I think it's absolutely great, and I think it's very positive. And I've always felt that public opinion was an important force in at least countering some of the hostility we're getting from the present Home Secretary, well, and, and indeed the previous Home Secretary. So I, I, think, I think we have to go 
because I reached out to public opinion. And in a way, w when I had an amendment down in 2016, public opinion became very supportive mm -hmm. because people, they saw people drowning in the Mediterranean. They saw that Syrian boy, Alan Kurdi, dead drowned on a Mediterranean beach, appalling pictures. And I think public opinion said, we can do something. And people started becoming supportive. And I remember one occasion, I was, I was walking down the street here and I was being shouted at. And usually people shout at politicians, it's hostile stuff. Mm -hmm. But no, it was sympathetic, it said, keep going with your amendment. And, you know, it, 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 it's so important that we get the public on our side and keep them on our side mm -hmm. and try and counter some of the hostile expressions made by politicians who should know better. Because traditionally our local communities can be very welcoming. Yes. Now, what we've got to do is to embrace newcomers, got to help them to learn English, above all learn English, because that's their access into, mm. we're, we're accessing services and benefits and what well, benefits they don't normally want, they want jobs, getting into the job market. Uh, I think we've got to help them to be part of our local community. To the kids love sport, mm. love sport, you know, all these things are, uh, and, and help them to engage with local people and become part of the local community. Yes, we saw that in the Afghan resettlement. There was a village, uh, had a, a hotel full of new arrivals from Afghanistan and the, the community worked out that Afghans love cricket. Yeah. And so rather than have Afghans versus the local team, they decided to mix the teams up and it was a great moment of bonding. So I think those opportunities for people to make relationships, break down the barriers, um, get people out of their ghettos and silos and, and, and mix together. Absolutely. Well, just before the pandemic, it seems years ago now, but uh, Fulham and Chelsea Football Foundations, they had an evening at Fulham Football Guard to train um, refugee boys given football training mm -hmm. on on Howell Pitch, you know, Premiership Club. Wonderful. I'd, I'd have uh, I'd given anything when I was their age to have been able to do that. Now, there were only boys. I should have argued there should be girls, but that's another thing. Yeah. Uh, and Guy Lineker was there, and it was a great evening. Mm -hmm. And and this is, this is, now, I'm not saying every foot every premiership football club should have a football training day for refugee boys, but I do think it was a sign of the interest that they have in, mm. in, in football, the Afghans uh, uh, in cricket as well, but mm. the, 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 these, were, these were soccer fans. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but I also saw a match in the local park between younger boys who just play football with, with other Sorry. kids. Yeah. And the, these are all, I hate the word normalised, but it, it normalises them. It, it makes them part of what yeah. every other young person is, and that, that is healthy. That's right. You spent a lifetime in public service and uh, not all of us can be elected politicians or members of the House of Lords. What would you say to someone watching today? How can they get involved in political change? A lot can be done at a local level, of course. Um, a lot can be done by, by making a positive step to uh, welcome, be welcoming to refugees, to talk to local councillors, because local authorities can play a big part in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Local schools can help the kids go to local schools that they can help, uh, and of course they, they can lobby their they can lobby their MPs against this dreadful mm. legislation that's, that's that's going through Parliament at the moment. Uh, so I think they should let their voice be heard. That's the key thing. And uh, let me repeat: at a local level, and if if they want to at a national level. I was standing in front of Parliament one day talking to a Syrian boy, and he pointed to the Palace of Westminster. I was on the green outside, and he said, "You know what I want to do in life?" I said, "No, I want to become an MP." I thought, great, great. I said, I said, you'll have to improve your English a bit, but great. And, <laughs> and, you know, a lot of the young people who've come say they would like to help their local, local, communi yes. their local communities. I think that is positive. Mm. And we've got to make that possible for them mm. and facilitate it. The young ones just want to go to school and resume their education. Mm. The older ones want to help and they want to earn a living. The True. other thing we have to do is to say, we can't deny you a chance of working. You can hang on for years. They don't want the benefits, they want to work. True. They want to work, they, with, it's self-respect for them and it's a benefit to the taxpayer mm -hmm. uh, and the local community. So we, we've got to change the way in which we look at people yeah. uh, and give them a chance. Uh, I think being able to work and pay your way mm -hmm. is a matter of dignity and self-respect and I think that's so important. That's right. What keeps you going? You know, it seems that sometimes we see really positive things like the welcome of Syrian refugees or Ukrainian refugees, but other days policy seems to go against us. How do you keep motivated to keep pursuing this? 
Well, there are a lot of voluntary organizations who work with refugees who wouldn't let me stop anyway because they want all of us <laughs> in Parliament, in one house or the other, to, 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 to do things. I've also, uh, I've also been incredibly impressed and humbled by going to the jungle in Calais or to refugee camps on the Greek islands and seeing young people, volunteers, not entirely from Britain, but many of them from Britain, going to spend a year or two of their lives helping very vulnerable fellow human beings. And, you know, if people can do that, then the least I can do in politics is to use my voice to support what they're doing and to support, to support the refugees. So it's, it's a matter of feeling that there are a lot of people who are supportive mm. and who... Uh, in the community, uh, uh, and they're entitled to feel the people in my position, or lucky enough to be in my position, uh, will go on doing what we need to do. Fantastic. Lord Dubs, thank you so much, not just for this interview, but for all you've been doing to champion the voices of refugees and asylum seekers, and we wish you every blessing in all your endeavours. Well, thank you. I'm sorry I can't be, I can't be with you today, uh, parliamentary reasons, but uh, good luck. I think the festival is a very important thing. I think it's great what you're doing. Congratulations on that. It's all part of this long haul effort to get public opinion on our side and to understand what our fellow human beings have gone through and how we can help them. That's right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you.